Hello there guys, welcome back to Unistalks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well today. Today is a very interesting video, I've got quite a few interesting things to discuss here and before we get into all of that, I'm going to ask you guys, if you are new, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded. I need a trim, I really need a haircut, this is getting ridiculous. We are still in lockdown, hairdressers are not opening, I think until April. April! So, you know, I might need to just go bald. I, I did tell myself secretly secretly that if Chelsea win the Champions League um, I might have to go bald just for the sake of it but at this rate I don't think we're gonna get to the final before I do it myself anyway we'll see what happens if you do want to see that let me know in the comments I know all of you are gonna say yeah but hit me up anyway just for the bants just for the bants I did a video earlier on with Matisse and Miz from the other side of the coin over on Matisse's channel or you can eat Chelsea make sure you check the link out here it was a very, very, very funny, funny video. Funny. So much banter. I cried with laughter. If you don't believe me, go and check it out for yourselves. I cried with laughter. Very, very good video. I hope all of you love it. And talking about watching videos, I don't know if any of you caught the interview that Thomas Tuchel had with Rio Ferdinand over on BT Sport. I have to say, I am so happy we've got Thomas Tuchel now. I am so gassed at the fact that he is here and our gaffer because that interview speaks volumes about his mindset, um, his personality, his character and what he is about as a person. He is just... Uh, what what's the what's the word what's the word i don't want to use the word woke because that's just thrown around like like honestly like a toy nowadays it's, it's become irrelevant we're, we're, it's lost context to the meaning of what it originally meant um being woke you know I, i'm just gonna throw it to the side but he is so bright in his thinking and he thinks critically he thinks critically, he knows what he wants, he's talking about Timo Werner and coming out of their comfort zone and how that's good for their characters and for their mindsets and their development and talking about getting players to find solutions on the pitch and that formations aren't actually that important. They only guide, but they're not actually an important tool. It's it's all about how the players define themselves on the pitch in the moment, in the circumstances of each game, which is always different. And he just went into so much detail. I was watching just mind blown. I was a mind blown at what I'm hearing. And you know, he does it with a smile. He does it with a joke. He does it relaxed. Everything about him, it makes me wonder how the hell did this guy have a bust up in PSG and at Dortmund? I don't get it. I don't get it. Now, one side of me is led to believe that he's learned from those mistakes because clearly he is someone that self-reflects a lot. He spoke about the fact that his contract is only 18 months long with an option to extend if things go well. And Rio Ferdinand asked him about that and he admitted, he admitted when I first heard that, I thought, I don't like that. I, I don't like that. What, 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 do, do they not trust me? Do they not think that I can go beyond 18 months? And then he said himself and then immediately it just clicked in my head. I thought, well, that doesn't actually change anything. You know, and to be honest, it's actually a good thing because it means that I need to prove myself. If I'm able to get results and take the team onwards, they'll keep me. If not, they will sack me. And he said it. If the contract is 18 months or three years or five years, if they want to sack me, they'll sack me. So that doesn't really make much of a difference. It's quite irrelevant when you think about it, which immediately tells me money is not the prime option in his head, which shows me he is a pure thinking man. And I love it. I love it. I love it. Because realistically, he could easily just say, yeah, you know what? A five-year contract, it's definitely better than an 18-month contract. Because if I get sacked in a five-year deal rather than an 18-year deal, I'm getting paid more. And that's the truth. Regardless if you get sacked, you're getting paid more on a five-year deal than you are on an 18-month. Clearly, that's not really a factor to him. He's clearly loaded. He already has money. Money's not an issue for him. So he is thinking about the development, his job, the club he's working for, the plays he's working with, his ambitions. That is what I love to hear. I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm going to leave a link here for you guys. Check it out. That interview, 17 minutes long, it was done just before we played against Atletico Madrid. So Rio Ferdinand interviewing Thomas Tuchel, very, very, very outstanding interview. Absolutely brilliant. Check it out for yourselves. You are going to love it if you haven't seen it already. You can thank me later. Now, as we move into more transfer news, 
transfer speculation. Who are we going for? What's the latest? Well, I'm here to fill you in with the cliff notes. The main topic at hand is still Erling Haaland. Of course, that's not going to go away until we get him. So let's get into it. Let's dive straight in. This is the latest and I'm going to go into some detail after I've read this out. So Check it out. Manchester City are not prepared to enter a bidding war for Chelsea target Erling Haaland. And that's via 90 minute football. That sounds fantastic to the year. Yeah, it's great. I know that Man City don't want the smoke. They don't want it. They, they know. They know if they even think of trying to enter a bidding war, <laughs> we, we're going to win. We're going to win. It's as simple as that. Man City have been in so much trouble just with FFP. They're not going to risk getting into more trouble and, and just splashing out money when they've got other priorities to think about as well. But that doesn't mean that they're not going to get him. Let's check out the article from 90 Minutes and see exactly what the underlying details states. Let's check it out. Manchester City are considering a double offer worth in excess of 100 million for Borussia Dortmund pair Erling Haaland and Giovanni Reina in the summer. Haaland is one of the hottest prospects in world football and has seen his star soar since swapping RB Salzburg for Dortmund in January 2020. 90 Minutes understands that City are determined to win the race to sign Haaland and are prepared to put together a package worth well over £100 million to land a striker and his Dortmund teammate Reiner. This deal would see the USA international, still aged just 18, remain with the German club for another year. The pair each have family links to City, with their fathers both former professionals who previously spent time on the blue side of Manchester. City are not prepared to enter a bidding war for Haaland, and although they have long considered themselves favourites to sign the 20-year-old, they are set to face competition from Premier League rivals Chelsea for his signature, as revealed by 90 Minutes in December. Those sources maintain the belief that the West Londoners, fresh from a summer of heavy spending in 2021, still have a real chance of signing the Norwegian. However, it is the club that feels right for Haaland who will ultimately land him. Here's one thing I just want to say, yeah? Erling Haaland, we are in London. Now, what would you rather choose, London or Manchester? I'm not having a dig at Manchester. Uh, the, the North is honestly a very good place. I'm not even kidding here. The North of, of England. If, there's, there's, for those that are not familiar, there's a North-South thing in England, yeah? It tends to be the North hate the South and the South hates the North. I don't know why. It's, it's just it is what it is. Does the, everyone down South thinks that the North has absolutely nothing and everyone's on job seekers allowance and whatnot. And everyone up North thinks everyone down South are snobby idiots who think about only themselves and no one else and are self-centered egotistical maniacs that is what the general consensus of thinking is in england now in manchester good city very good city very lively city i'll have it right there's a good buzz and a good vibe in manchester but london you know london london if you're loaded and you have money london's the best city on the planet i will tell you that now maybe okay maybe not maybe dubai Maybe Dubai is a nice place to be. But London, when you're loaded, you got everything at your doorstep. Everything is close. Everything is there. Ask for it, name it, whatever, you'll get it. It's brilliant. So that's if you have money. If you're struggling, London's not really the place to be. It's an expensive place. So yeah. For Holland, London. London, mate. But anyway, in regards to this article, it's, it's a weird one because clearly Man City consider themselves favourites. We know that Man City are going to need a striker once Aguero departs and Haaland to City, especially with his dad that used to play for Manchester City um, before Roy Keane snapped him in half. You know, <laughs> there, there, are, there are elements there that favour City going in for Haaland and getting him. However, Chelsea can definitely tempt Haaland over. It's just going to come to who wants him most and who's willing to pay more, as far as I'm concerned. I think Chelsea will go all out. And if that is legit, that Man City do not want to enter a bidding war, well, thank goodness we've got Marina Granovskaya at our disposal because when it comes to business, she knows what she's doing. And behind Marina, we got Roman with a blank check waiting. Marina, name the price. I'm here with a pen ready to write the check out. So it's, it's looking good. I do think... I think we have exactly what it takes to beat Manchester City to his signature and I think we have the project, the players, the ambition and the history to back ourselves up. When you look in terms of what Chelsea want to achieve, how long has it been since we were at the pinnacle 
and where we're looking to go now, we're getting stronger and the signings that we've brought in are only going to complement that. I do think there's more in the team for Haaland to complement himself alongside compared to Manchester City. I think he'll find himself more at home in terms of a footballing point of view at Chelsea, as long as we keep Thomas Tuchel for now, fingers crossed, then at Manchester City, where it's all going to be a little bit experimental, as far as I'm concerned. But with us, there's a clear plan. A clear plan, I'm sure. Timo Werner is up front. We're going to stick Haaland alongside him. We're going to have two men up top. Haaland will be one of them. We have a stacked creative midfield behind him that hopefully are going to be firing next season. And it's looking good. It's honestly looking good. So fingers crossed, if Manchester City do not want to enter a bidding war, so be it. Let's start bidding. <laughs> let's start bidding and let's win the war. I'm just waiting for Sheikh Mansour to wave a white flag to Roman Abramovich and go, I'm not bidding, I'm not bidding. He's yours, he's yours. You can take him, you can take him. We'll see what happens. But that is the latest for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. In regards to Thomas Tuchel, if you've already seen that interview on BT Sport with Rio Ferdinand and your thoughts on Erling Haaland, Manchester City, not wanting a bidding war, what would you do? Are you up for that? Do you think we can get him or steal him away from Manchester City who consider themselves favourites? Let me know. I would love to hear it in the comments. Hit the subscribe button if you are new. Hit that notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded. Be sure to catch a brand new video tomorrow. I will be dropping that. And then on Saturday will be the preview to Chelsea versus Manchester United. And it's going to be a good one because just like a couple of things went in our favour against Atletico... It looks like a couple of things are going to go in our favour against United because United seem to have some injuries and it doesn't look like certain men are going to be available for Sunday. So we'll get into it on Saturday for the match preview when we have more information. Keep your eyes peeled for the video I'm going to drop to you guys tomorrow. I'll see all of you then. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one. Look after yourselves. Take care and peace.